Five seconds remaining. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the I League Season 3 North American Qualifiers. This is Reserve it. For all the marbles, champions of Summer's Rift going up against Team Tinker here in a best of three series. Who will move on to, of course, the I League land? Who will be done and out? We'll find out in just a couple of games here in this best of three series. Team Taker, probably the obvious favorites, champions of Summer's Rift, although they had maybe a couple of misplays in that first game against Not Today, which they just defeated not too long ago. They looked pretty solid, all, all things considered. Team Taker, of course, a solid team, a solid roster, a couple of all-stars, and a team that's looking pretty good going into maybe the TI qualifiers, and maybe they get an invite somehow. We'll have to wait and see. There's a lot still at stake here, especially in this series. We'll jump into it right away here on Beyond the Summit. My name is Mott, as always, bringing you the cast today with Trouf. Trouf, how are you, man? I'm doing good. Oh, you almost caught me. I was taking a sip of my root beer. Ten seconds but, um, remaining. But I'm doing good. This should be a good one. I'm, I'm pretty excited for this, Five honestly. Five seconds remaining. I, I feel like this series will be closer than people expect. A lot closer. Maybe Reserve goes time. full three games. And I don't really know who comes out on top. I, 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 like the, I, I like Team Tinker's roster a lot, but I feel like... If Demon could just play a bit better, uh, Summer's Rift might have a pretty good side because Dia they played pretty phenomenally uh, in those first two games against Not Today, despite some issues with not only Demon, but the rest of the squad as well. Yeah, I don't think it, I mean, Demon definitely could have played better, but I don't think it was all him. I think right. that uh, a lot of hero p people were getting picked off. Like Even at the beginning of Game 1, um, when Banana Slim Gemma was on the Slark, he died a couple times he definitely shouldn't have, but... I think Brax really carried them, and we mentioned too that Bugatti was played remaining. pretty nicely as well. But um, I mean, it's easy to say going into the series Five after watching the remaining. last one that it, it could be close, and I think it, I think it very well could be. I definitely do favor Team Tinker here, though. I, I think that if it does go to three games, which it might, I still favor them. But anything could happen here in NA Dota. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. Quasi NA Dota, I guess. Mm, sort of NA Dota, mostly NA Dota, with the exception of Quakefa, Black, and uh, Pilot Die, obviously. But I think I think they're mostly in North America now, yeah. boot camping. I'm not sure if all of them are. I I know a lot of them are in the same area, but not all of them. I'm I'm not 100 percent sure on that though. But ten seconds remaining. Yep, I think they. Yeah, I think most of them are anyway. So they're considered NA Dota. And then, all right, as far as the draft here coming up, pick. Uh, Champions of Summer's Rift, they go for the early Wisp-Axe combination with Skywrath. I've talked about this before countless times, but Skywrath or uh, Lion or Rubik, one of these three heroes are quite good when you run the Axe, or sorry, when you run the Wisp, just because they can kind of support on their own if need be, because you are going to come out with dual lanes, so that means one of your dual lanes is going to be a little bit weaker than it otherwise would be with a tri lane. So, Ten seconds I think remaining. that's pretty good. Um, Axe is very good against Storm Spirit. It's pretty good against Five Phoenix, too, because remaining. if you can catch him before he casts that egg, then uh, you can shut him down quite nicely. And Phoenix is not a big Reserve fan of Axe. Time. Not many heroes are, to be fair, but um, you're right. Skyrath Mage pretty good at the solo support role. I, I, you almost see this hero every time if there's not. Or, or, I mean, very rarely do you see a, a weak hero in lane because it's just you, you need something. You need damage. You need ways to zone enemy heroes out. And I think Skyrath Mage provides yeah. that. And now you have a sniper to work with as well. So Radiant this this feels a bit like a 6.83 draft. The IO may be a little bit less so. Um, they don't really have necessarily, and I put this in air quotes, a relocate partner. But I'm not sure if they need one with the axe exactly. and maybe even the sniper. Team Taker go for the clockwork, which is Bulba's go-to hero. And especially against the sniper, it doesn't. It's, it's not really too absurd to, to see a clockwork. And even a storm in this situation. Both the storm and the clockwork are going to be on top of the sniper. So they have to find a way to either relocate him out or kind of keep him safe. And that's the one problem I have with the sniper pickup here. But yeah. with that being said, he is still a very good hero. I do think it's a little weird picking sniper into Five this. And that's a very remaining. standard pick into the sniper as well. I would say also <laughs> Batrider would have been quite good for them too. Um, but Clockwork is not bat. so good against sniper. Well, not just good against the sniper, but he's also quite good against the Wisp and the Axe. Uh, just Wisp relocates in, in general. Hooking in, walking a little bit further. Not actually cock... Uh, I actually just said it. Cog blocking, but... um. But actually pushing them back with the cogs is a little bit more effective in some uh, in some scenarios. So that that you have Five to worry about that if you're remaining. Wisp and Axe. And I, I agree. I don't think they have this quintessential Wisp partner. Reserve I don't time. I don't suspect we'll see the tiny come out for two reasons. One, safe lane sniper, yeah, can work, but as a dual lane, you run yourself into the risk of, you know, potential smoke Dia ganks up there and just crushing your safe lane. Mm -hmm. So there's that. There's also I, I don't know if I've ever seen Banana Slam Jamma play tiny. I don't know if that's a hero that he's comfortable yeah, with. Yeah, I don't know. But that doesn't seem like 
it doesn't seem like a BSJ hero. Then again, there are very few that do because I, I feel like I see Slark from him so often. He's played a lot of other heroes. I'm just forgetting currently, but not that Slark Io is that great of a combination. I think it's okay, actually. It's actually really good, to be honest. Ten seconds it, it actually pumps him up. The thing about him is that one, he's a great relocate partner because Five he can just remaining. press his ultimate if, if they do suspect some kind of follow-up from the other team ready for the relocate, and then they can't really Reserve focus him time. unless they have tons of AoE. Mm. But the big thing, too, is the overcharge gives him so much attack speed that means he's getting faster charges of his um, essence shift. So, it, it, and it's not banned out here. Yeah, I'm going to say right. it's would actually be very... It's, Radiant one, it's his comfort hero, right? Like This is the hero that he plays mo more than yes. any other hero. Yeah. And uh, I actually think it works quite nicely with their draft. Now, this is something that uh, I, I I just haven't seen enough of. I feel like it could be really good, and, and I'm waiting for it to be really good this game. But, um, yeah, this is, like you said, it's his comfort hero. He knows how to build this hero. He's played it a lot. He's streamed about it a lot. He's talked about it a lot on his stream. And I, I think he remaining. he feels very comfortable with the hero. So if, if you're going to go Five for something, and especially in this best of three series, in the first game of the Grand Finals... You're going to want to try something, Reserve you know, time. you want to have something to go to. And that's the Stark in this situation. For Team Tinker, they're looking for their safe lane hero. For, for Black, more than likely. Quake was going to send the Storm Spirit mid, I'd imagine, then obviously the Clockwork offlane. Actually, I, this is strange, because the, the Phoenix is like, you think of him as the offlaner, but yeah. where is he played now? Probably a support. Probably okay. Clockwork top. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they went like Drow here. I'm checking to see if it's banned. Drow's traditionally thought of as a really good hero against Axe. They got they would have four ranged heroes with good initiation on onto the into the mix as well. Um, so there's that. I'm just trying to think of heroes that also Black plays a lot. I, um, it's hard to kind of come up with these things off the top of your head when you don't have the list in front of you. But they yeah. only got 20 seconds left, so they've eaten through all their time, really taking it down to the wire here, thinking about what they want. It's a juggle between hard carry and initiation. Anti-Mage, all right, so good carry. against the Axe, really great against the Skyrath Mage. It's actually quite good against the Slark, too, because you can just blink out of the pounce. So until Slark gets like an Abyssal, and even then, it's kind of hard to get your fingers on that, that slippery target of Anti-Mage. This is going to be very interesting. This is, uh, the support Phoenix is not something I see often, first of all. I think it's just another hero to work against the sniper, and which is also very good for, like, that's why the Anti-Mage is good, because you can blink it on the sniper, you can blow him up. Uh, I think Sniper is, he's going to be kind of the black sheep here for Champions of Summer's Rift, because if he gets caught out, that's fine as long as Slark and Axe are getting decent farm, specifically Slark, and he's accomplishing a lot. I, I do worry about the Sniper here, though, for um, for Brax. Ten I feel like this might be a bit remaining. tough. We'll wait and see. This this could be a bit difficult. Well, it'll be, I think, tough in the mid game, but before, like, level 6, I don't think they have... Very many ways to kill him in mid unless the Wisp is not near him at all. But that would seem weird to have a straight-up tri lane of Wisp with Slark top, so... I mean, the gank key potential of Team Tinker is not that impressive before level 6. Like, they'd have no Clockwork Hook. They have... It's just a Witch Doctor. Mm. That That's that's about it. Phoenix can, I guess, dive, but he's going to have very low levels, so it's not like his damage output's going to be very high. True. So I think for Team Tinker, you have to kind of wait, farm up, sec make sure that you secure Anti-Mage's farm, and then he can kind of make himself self-sustainable once he gets that Battle Fury. And then once you get those levels on Clock and Storm, then you can maybe make right. to roam around. It's all about patience early on for the Tinker roster. They, they they don't want to get too far behind, but they shouldn't with the lanes they have, the setup they have. They should be able to get farm the Anti-Mage. Storm should get decent farm mid for a period of time. I think Bubble will get a decent amount of farm as well. And we have to wait and see what the actual lanes are for Summer's Rift. If we do see the, uh, I don't know, like... Maybe, do you think we see the Slark IO dual lane mid and then send Brax top? Or do we see Brax mid, Slark uh, IO dual lane top, and then maybe Demon Bugatti bottom? Hmm. Um, there is a chance you go Wisp Axe bottom okay. and then just Sniper mid and then a dual lane top. Okay. I think that Team Tinker are well equipped though to fight that. I think they can easily just, like, Witch Doctor stun the Wisp, blink in from AM and kill him. Mm -hmm. And then once you get levels into your mana break. Then you can just also go in the axe as well. So, I think the best thing to do would be put Wisp mid with the with the sniper, stack some camps for either the axe or even the sniper himself to take him out with the shrapnel, and then um, just have the Wisp nearby to make sure that sniper doesn't get ganked. And, and especially once he level, hits level six, you can protect him from storm spirit ganks with the overcharge into bottle or what what have you. 
They have a lot of defensive utility at their at their back, at least with the IO. But I don't know. We'll have to see how they decide to lane this up for Summer's Rift. This is going to be an interesting match for sure. And if they can maybe take down BSJ Slark in this first game, Team Ticker might have a momentum advantage, a mental advantage. I think that's the biggest thing. Black gets, if Black gets free farm on this anti mage, it also could be another mental roadblock coming up for Summer's Rift because Black is so good with this hero. You don't want him dominating. I think it kind of comes down to Bugatti, honestly. There's a lot of there's a lot of um, variables in the series, but I think Axe might be the most important. We saw his blink stomps be crucial in the last series. I think it's kind of the same thing with his blink calls and uh, Karen Helix procs. Obviously, you can't really you can't really like battle. use those. Those those are kind of random, and you have to just let them come to you. But at the same time. I think Bugatti is going to be a big factor this game. And Team Tinker, once they get the levels, how will they use them to their advantage? Or maybe even disadvantage. A big series coming out. Team Tinker versus Summer's Rift about to get on our way here. Our first game of this best of three series to see who moves on and heads to I-League. The land finals. BSJ looking for the top rune spot. He will find it. Brax, I don't think he'll grab it. Maybe he will. They're going to tether the to him quickly. Begins. And it looks like he is going to give it to Hero. Whitebeard, so he's going to have his early battle. No surprise there. Not really buying anything for an IO. He picks up his early bottle and he'll head towards... We'll, we'll wait and see. Maybe he stays mid with the sniper. That might be okay. It's not something you usually see, but sure, why not? I was wondering when Demon was going to go pool the sniper. I was like waiting forever, and then finally he gets a pool from Demon. <laughs> like, Demon, you don't need all four of those tangos. So sniper, he's got a good block too. So they both got bounty runes, but... With the extra block in the mid lane too, that's really going to be an easy... An easier time than he would have had in mid. But Koikfo running up, spamming his remnants. He actually gets two creeps running towards him too, so that's really good. Anyway, bottom, it is going to be this Axe and Wisp off lane. I think they have the ranged heroes to deal with this though. And you see the early spam coming out. Yeah, the, the Flame Spirit's doing so much work. The cast already stunning Bugatti. They have to be careful. I mean, you have a stout shield. There's no ring of protection. Come here for the extra. He's not as tanky as he might be. They do have the bottle to region up. So two more charges to work with. They'll have to be careful. Already a lot of spam used from the side of Team Tinker. The main goal is secure Black a couple of levels into that mana break. Maybe just one early on. He goes for the burning build. We'll see. And then try to put aggression, especially on Whitebeard on the IO. If they can bring him down, that'll be huge. However, he's going to be sitting in the back. His, his positioning is going to be probably pretty important. Meanwhile, top lane, Boba going to pull. I believe that actually might have been a dire pull. And uh, he'll just sit back and try to leash experience from one of the two of these camps. But bottom lane is where the action is going to be, I believe. Yep. Axe running in with the spins. If he can get level two, he's going to keep in mind, too, if they get a call onto this. Oh, they're putting some damage onto Axe. Black hasn't leveled up any ability yet, so he's trying to... Oh, here we go! Level 2! He could make a double- oh, oh, barely! Barely gets the call onto two heroes. I think that he would have got spins. And keep in mind, I was going to say, the Whirling Axe has been physical damage. Does it almost seems extra damage to Phoenix because he has absolutely no armor starting out. Yeah, that's uh, it's not much. He's a very squishy bird. And that's why he can, he can live twice in some of these engagements with his Phoenix Egg. But, also, Whitebeard going for the early overcharge is very important too. That even that level one overcharge is just something Radiant's to keep him alive and make sure he, he can run at people. And I don't think that'll be the last time we see that kind of initiation from Bugatti. If he could find those two heroes together again and get a call, that'd be huge. The problem is he doesn't have boots yet, so he's gonna just he's gonna have to rely on tether move speed and positioning. Positioning here is especially coming out from Team Tinker. However, so far they have secured free farm for black. Again, we'll keep our eye on bottom lane. Middle lane, you have 14 last hits going out for Brax, which is pretty good. This is not the easiest hero to CS with, and he's doing a great job. Meanwhile, bottom, Bugatti in trouble. They haven't used the cast yet. They're going to pop up the, the call, but look at the regen coming out from Hero from Whitebeard. Bugatti barely takes any damage. Pilot die has to be careful, but Black jumps in, gets the first blood, and might get two. The body block from way two. Can Black get the second kill? It's going to be close, not dive. That far, that tower doing too much damage, he'll back away. But that first blood coming out for your anti mage, a very big pickup coming out. It looks like almost Summer's Rift were going to be the ones to get it on Pile I Die. Yeah, there was a chance that. Uh... Oh, he had. Oh, wait, um, what's his name? Wiper actually could have done a double bottle there. When you TP in with a bottle, you can not only overcharge and bottle yourself, but then you can also apply the bottle charge to them, and it like kind of double heals them. Hmm. Uh, I don't, I don't know if he knows about that, but. Uh, there was a chance Black could have got the kill on Axe if his auto attack plus move was a little bit more crisp, but play the safe route. It's, it was very hard to do. It would have been very close. Way too taking a lot of damage. This extra ward on the side is helping keep vision. 
I'm wondering oh, if Team Team They're going knows. in on Brax. Brax is maybe dead. These Flame Spirits are on point. And if Koikfa could get one right click, he just wasn't in position. And now they both might die. Pala die and Koikfa so low. Is there a third? No, there's no third charge of that shrapnel. That would have been two kills. I can't believe they both... I can't believe everybody survived there. Not only the Radiant yeah. Squad, but the Dire as well. Yeah, that was scary. I didn't see the beginning of it, but... I mean, they are essentially winning two lanes, though, when they're and Maybe they're not winning bottom, but they're actually making it so Black isn't getting the most... Not, not even CS, but the most levels. Because he's been having to share a lot of experience. Oh no, Pink Panda, way too. You are in trouble. He gets the stun off before the call. Can he still get it? Will he get any lucky procs, though? It's only one hero attacking him. I'm not so sure. Yeah. Oh, oh the rage that one creep. creep! The rage creep! Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, if I was way too, I'd be so mad. It might not have mattered, but Black is going to get silenced up. He won't get called, but he's got the uh, battle hunger on him now. And they've got the spirits. Black is in a heck of a amount of trouble. In fact, he will get called, and that's going to be the kill. Bugatti gets the double, the TP in. It's a bit too late. He's looking for a hero. He'll get him with the flame spirits. Bugatti is going to run away and make it out in time, but Carter has been drawn down in this bottom lane and it actually turns out that Summer's Rift get a decent a decent advantage because not like you like you mentioned they're getting mid and top farm as well. Yeah, Bulba is getting some okay farm too though. That's the one thing to keep in mind. So he's up to level four and a half. He's got 13 CS, which is pretty good. Um But yeah, it's that was a really nice dive there. That one creep man just kind of ran towards them on the bottom side of that uh, the little patch of trees and ridiculous. created the spin there for him. I don't know how he got aggroed either, but that's that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's weird. MVP range creep coming in. And Black is now not comfortable, really. It looks like he just he doesn't have room. Waitsu and Pilot Eye are here, but they, they've turned this into an aggro tri lane for Summer's Rift, and I think that's a smart choice. They don't need help top. Meanwhile, there's the call. Black will take some damage. Hero going to take a Fire Spirit and Icarus dive. Bugatti now getting chased down, or giving chase rather onto Pilot Eye. He's going to get Ancient Seal. The right click. There's no jam. He's not six, but it should be enough damage with the right click coming up from Bugatti. But Demon getting low as well. Not dead yet. Goes down to the last right click of Way Too. The spin's coming in. Way Too in trouble. Buddha Restoration to get up, but now Hero has to go the long way around, and it looks like it's a double kill again for Bugatti. Black now alone. His support's on the dirt dead. Quake was going to jump in. Perfectly timed rotation. They've got to get two kills out of this. Otherwise, this is going to be a problem. The pull coming in. Black they get the call off Bugatti, trying to go to work. Can he get another spin proc? Blinks away. Koikfa gets the double kill, and Black survives. More rotations coming down bottom. Koikfa kind of alone. Ancient Seal, the shrapnel. Koikfa's going to take an assassinate. Not dead yet. He'll fall lightning away. The arcade bolt. Strength dreads. He's going to fall. Food or restoration. Not in time. And the rotation in from the sniper at the very end of the exchange. The fight recap doesn't show us enough, unfortunately. Somehow, though, it turns somewhat even. There was maybe a chance that he lives there if way to use the Voodoo Restoration. That could have potentially also swapped bottles very, very quickly and then healed them up, but it takes it like a good full second for the bottle to actually it's trigger with the extra worse. charges. And I don't think that would have been in time. Very, very close, but they do get the kill with the rotation from the sniper to the bottom area. And he's actually camping out there right now. Here comes another tether from Bugatti. Or onto Bugatti. Demon in trouble mid lane. Quickly should get this kill. And it's something. Pilot I rotated and they even had Waitsu there as well. But uh, bottom lane black is just getting dope. No area is safe. And he was off to a fast start with CS, but he is down almost 25 CS, almost doubled by uh, Banana Slam Jammer, who's at 51, 52 now, and continues to just go to work. Boba is harassing. He has hookshot. He could try to bait out a Shadow Dance or something. Luckily, mid lane is getting pressured by Team Seeker. I don't think they could take this tower. There's already multiple TPs coming in. Sniper's back in the fray. Assassinate's going way too is dead. Yeah, he just okay. did not back in time. He was not expecting the sniper. The assassinate comes through and way too is the casualty. I mean, that's a completely unavoidable death, I should say. He just took tons of damage from the tower. And Bulba. I don't know what more to say about that top one. Flo, Bulbo, you are in trouble. It's taken out there. Banana Slam Jam getting the kill. Nice play from Demon to get up the sounds as well. Easy kill. And that's more farm going the way of Banana Slam Jamma. This Comfort Hero, he's looking pretty comfortable. He's looking pretty solid. So, very good start for Summer's Rift. They have about a 1,500 net worth lead, which is a decent chunk of gold early on in this game. And Black has to find some room to farm. I mean, they even lost the Tier 1 tower there. 
Which might even be better for Black, just because the, he's near to the tier 2 tower. He's got some more room the lane will push out, but he does have to be very, very careful. He's probably going to get treads next and then transition into Battle Fury, but it's going to take a while to get there. This isn't going to be that 12-minute Battle Fury that we're used to seeing from Black. It's going to be more along the lines of 15, maybe 16 minutes. Maybe even later than that. We'll see. I mean, if, he's, if he doesn't get touched anymore, he'll have it at an okay time, but... If they keep putting aggression, maybe they get an early blink before Vanguard on Bugatti, then Radiant's they can keep pressure up. Relocate is online in about half a level. Tons of pings coming out. And with the smoke coming out here from Team Tinker, they got the hook shot ready to go. Nicely done here from Bulba. And they should get this kill on to the sniper. Bulba does not second guess himself. He jumps in, and this is going to be Brax falling. It should be anyway. Finally, the flare should secure the kill, and it will. Bubble will grab the last hit. Now, a counter smoke gang into the enemy's jungle from Summer's Rift. And if they can find Black, that'd be huge. But Black smartly sitting underneath the tier 2 tower, realizing that everyone's missing off the map. Tier 1 tower mid is going to go down. Quickfoot picks up a much needed kill there. Wrap into the enemy jungle. Bugatti and Hero will back away. They don't want to find anything. They don't want to go too deep. This does give BSJ some more time to work with up top, though. Quickfoot mid. Very, very, very out of position. Nice use of that silence. And he should be dead. The call is going to go through the Mystic Flare. The combos there. Demon on point with these ancient seals. Quickfoot not having enough time to get out of there. And he does go for an early blink. I think this is definitely the right decision over the Vanguard. The reason why I think he died is that if you saw what happened, is they didn't contest that tower in mid at all. And so Black was rightly sitting really far back, and he's like, yo, they're not they're not mid at all. They're definitely trying to gank me bottom. And quick for using that information, he didn't think that they were actually trying to gank him, but it's because Black was taking too, too far back. They're like, screw this, we can't get him, let's go for someone else. And they found Quick, but... Yeah, good rotation from Summer's Rift. It's, you know, maybe other teams would have just sat in the jungle waiting for him to pop out, but they knew, they knew that that wasn't going to come to fruition, so instead they go mid and they pick up a pretty big kill, actually. Uh, Quick is second in net worth. He does have a full Oblivion staff, looking to get to that Orchid, obviously. Again, we keep touching back on BSG. He actually goes for a drum. And in this situation, when you're kind of ahead, you can kind of snowball with this item. He likes to go for Lothars, I should say Shadow Blade, and then after that, maybe get another item. But early drum pickup for BSJ this game, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, I guess he just wants the more stats so he can perhaps fight early. I mean, Summer's Rift is an early, like, a mid game oriented lineup. Like, they can fight, they can actually fight really early with the Wisp Axe. Mm -hmm. And with him having the blink, so. Attack. Here we go. They are spotted, or were they smoked? No, they're actually smoked here. I don't know if they saw the smoke, but Pilot Eye might break it. He actually didn't break it. So they think that nothing is happening right now. Black's going to get initiated on. They have under an ulti ready to go from Demon as well. Ancient Seal, Mystic Flare, and Black should fall here. In fact, the Cohen Blade from Gotti will secure it. Call's not available, but Waitsu is just going to get chased down. Tower hits. Hook shot, but it's onto his own creep wave, but they will reinitiate. Bugatti in trouble. No relocate out available. Io's not there in time. Demon, he's going to get relocated out. They'll bring him to the base. I will be the martyr. That was a hook shot that did miss. However, they were lucky enough that Bugatti was too far away from the IO. BSJ does take down the tier one tower top. Nice cog placement. It'll push Hero back. He can't even tether. He had some time there, but it just used too far away, and he'll go down. Actually, getting the kill as Pilot die. Again, space created, and they killed the anti mage. I think also way too. One of the tricks you can do against uh, those situations. Maybe he was scared that he would die too. But if you walk into the Mystic Flare and kind of try to divide the damage. It doesn't look all that impressive. Hold that thought. Banana Slam Jammy, he's ulted up right now. The ult coming out from Sniper does get the kill onto the Clockwork. They're trying to pursue Banana Slam Jammy. He has to pounce up over the trees. Koifa, Black running over through. He does have no mana. Mana Void can come out here in a second. Meanwhile, Pilot Eye falls in the mid, and they do get the kill onto Banana Slam Jammy. So crazy fight. Two things going on at once. I couldn't really see. I, I was trying to get both as best as possible. I was, doing, I was channeling my inner Pit Muckle. I mostly got both of the kills. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, pretty crazy fight. I gotta say though, that was the first time BSJ engaged in a team fight. It actually resulted in him dying. I mean, he got a kill out of it, <laughs> I believe, but it's not the great. Maybe you just want to sit back and farm a bit more. I don't know. Yeah, I, I still think it's a little interesting that he doesn't go for the Shadow Blade. I know that he really likes to go for that build, but I've been seeing him do this a little bit more lately. Um, but I think it's really important that Koifa has, a, has an okay time. Shutting down the Anti-Mage. It's great, it's fine and all, but he will always come back and be effective in the in the mid to late game, always. Storm Spirit, if he snowballs hard in the beginning, he'll snowball, snowball and continue that momentum onward. So the fact that Koikpa almost has an Orchids right now is really, really good for Team Tinker. Again, this is not a team that should have done well in the early game. 
They just need to focus on the mid game when they get their levels and their items. Yeah, they, they just need to not panic at this point. I have to say, Summer's Rift have some fantastic awards though, placed by Demon. He's been yes. behind enemy lines in multiple facets. He's got a ward here, ward here. Specifically, this ward here is pretty fantastic. I really like this ward here though. This is a good one, and he is living dangerously, but he doesn't seem to mind, oh. and he is getting so much information currently with these wards with where he is he knows they're pretty much all bottom at this point you could see him circling the map he's saying guys they're all down here if we want to fight maybe we can or if we just want to split up the map and farm top put a little pressure on the tier two tower put a little pressure on the tier one tower mid maybe we could do that because they're all trying well, to keep black safe this information is actually making it so team tinker is wasting a lot of time and resources because they're all trying to bait black they're all sitting down here baiting black, thinking that all the people are off of the map from Summer's Rift. But they know they're baiting black, because Demon's pinged it out and just knows with the wards. Relocate plus the silence coming out onto Koikva, and there's the call. It's an easy, easy kill. So Demon making some nice rotations, but even better, just having the vision on the map to get those kills. And yeah, this vision has been absolutely huge. Top tower That's something we talked about in the last series when Tigger were playing up in that semi-final matchup, and, and obviously waits you with the tree and protector. Radiance Did a very, very solid tower. job getting wards up. Now it's Demon here on a Skyrath Mage, you don't think of him as somebody that goes behind enemy lines and gets up these wards. I don't want to touch on it too much, but it's been impressive. Back to the cores, if you look at Brax sitting on Ayasha, getting close to the SMY, very, very close, in fact, just needs that recipe. So, Summer's Rift are getting this bit of advantage here. They even have a 4,000 net worth lead. Again, for Tim, Team Tinker, you just can't panic. You're very close to battle if you're in the anti-mage. Like I said, 15, 16 minute timing. Quake was getting close to his Orkin. In fact, he has that second Oblivion Staff. They need more time. They need some more time. They need more levels specifically on their supports. They need more items. And they'll get there soon. But is it going to be too late or is it going to be just at the right time? I think if they don't die anymore before they get the Orchids on Storm, they'll be fine. Because I think that Storm can actually solo initiate with an Orchids onto the Slark and kill him. before If he does not Darth, uh, Dark Pact, I think he'll definitely get that solo kill. You always have to be careful, though, if he's getting baited. Is there a Wisp nearby to relocate or overcharge heal him? Those are the questions you have to ask yourself before you initiate, obviously. But they really need to protect They have a lot of wards. They got... Oh, that smoke should be spotted. Yeah, I they, think they, pinged they it out. think they saw it. Yeah, it was actually the sniper that pinged it. So they back away. Demon was heading into the jungle, and he gets another aggressive ward down. And this one did get countered. It got sentried. Please, no. Okay, he didn't... Yeah, they, All right, he disconnected. Damn it. They pinged it out. As, or Koifa pinged it out angrily as soon as he died, so... They knew that was there, but this is some really fantastic warding from Demon, I have to say. Like, it's giving him so much information. Now, you could say, well, they don't have vision of the runes, but they don't really need it. As long as they see the entry of the heroes into wherever lanes they're going, they know exactly where they are. That's why deep wards are always better than, than not, because the deeper, the better. We'll just say that. Yeah. I'm, just the aggressive... That's how you, you, you hold your lead. Um, the aggressive warding. It's it's often talked about as, as support players, is that... When, when you are trying to either get back into the game or, or hold a lead, you need to have those aggressive wards up because defensive vision doesn't give you too much, honestly. No. It's just not enough. I, I, ideally, you almost you always want to have aggressive wards in any stage of the game. Yes. It's just a matter of getting there to place them without being noticed. Or die. You don't necessarily want to waste smokes just to place wards. Yeah. It's kind of a waste. Sometimes it can be good. But uh, if you find yourself in the position to place them without being seen, then the more aggressive, the better. And Demon's done a good job. The Dana Slam Jam, I'm going to get spotted out. Uh, he's got a Dark Pact. He's going to get hook shot. It Actually, that hook shot did not stun him because the Dark Pact lasted just long enough to stop the stun. That's pretty important. And Bulba might be the lamb to the slaughter here at this point. He's kind of left behind. They're looking to re-engage. The Phoenix Hall's gonna go. They're gonna Death Ward. Oh, the cask. On the high ground. The cask is doing work. Black's gonna mana void, but he doesn't get the right target. They do get Bugatti. The Mystic Flare of the Ancient Seal blowing up the Anti-Mage. Koifa coming in. Demon gets a double kill. Koifa now almost out of mana. Has to be careful. TP from way too. He should make it out, but what about Koifa? He's got to bottle up. He's gonna try to TP. This could be huge if he can make it out. And he will. He will make it out. They didn't have a disable. They had no way to stun him. Nice TP coming through, but that fight going horribly wrong for Team Tinker. It was a good counter initiation. However, the anti mage not man avoiding the right target and also getting obliterated by that Scarath mage. I just think it was it's weird to initiate that deep into Summer's Rift. They have tier one towers up, man. And to going on the Radiant worst hero possible when it was obvious we we're gonna go onto him. Like Radiant he had full vision of the book ready to come. Here comes Quake for ready to initiate yet again on Demon this time. Still no Orchids, but they're putting damage on the Banana Slam Gemma. He does know, have 
And ulti, they're trying to relocate him. a map. No, they're trying to relocate people in. Okay. Brax is going to fight. Big hook shot on it, too. Is this going to be enough, though? Brax overcharged. They're going to try to get Hero. They might finish him off. They will. Black gets a triple kill for Koifa. Bugatti got to come and gets the jam up on one, but will he make it out of here alive? The Overload slowing him up. He has that move speed coming out from, of course, the Culling Blade, but will get out just in time. Turns into, I think, a four for two, maybe five for two in the end. Somehow, Team Tinker turned that fight around. Black gets in, gets a kill on that IO, makes sure they can't get out. And then they pick up the big kill on Brax, who just, they relocated him in when that fight was pretty much over, which was very interesting. Yeah, it was, I, I was caught off guard. I didn't really, it's honestly hard for me to see what was going on in that fight, but um, Slark died, dying early on with that. It, it kind of gives some hope there to Team Tinker. That was without the Orchids, too, I believe. It was. He just got it. He yeah, just got he, it. Wow, he just got it and already has 1,200. So that was a big fight. For he him. had 2,000 like before. Yeah, he had a triple kill, I think. Or it might have been double. Either yeah, way. Either way. Yeah. <laughs> he got some good Jinx. gold. Uh, like, look up here. He's actually going to go up top. I think he can kill him solo if he gets the Orchids off before Dark Pack. And yeah, Waitsu's behind him, too, just for good measure. Ah. Uh, <laughs> 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 Oh, Brax. I feel for him, man. This must be tough. This is probably his all. He's probably playing with a lot of latency issues. Yeah, it, it really sucks. I've been in positions like that, too. I'm sure everyone has. Yeah, it's not fun. It's not this, great. Yeah. But anyway, if he doesn't... This, this pause actually could really hurt Team Tinker, because right now they could be discussing, like, where are people on the map? I don't see anybody. There's no one farming mid, no one farming bottom. Careful top, right? This could be this discussion going around in their heads. Yeah. If that's the case, usually at pauses, you do either... Actually, usually in pauses, you instinctively just back, because you forget, like, where people are. Your train of thinking isn't there. And as you see on the mini-map there, they don't want Summer Surf to I've know at I've already got all. the AFK overlay on. I just need to tell everybody okay. else, too. I mean, I guess me talking about it isn't helping at all, but it's a quick pause. Oh, Bulb was telling him to wait, but this could be bad because I, I think Banana Slam Demo would have otherwise kept farming this, but now because of this pause, he might just dark pack, psh, turn turn tail, and pounce out of there. So we'll see. I don't think I have the authority to say this, but I'm saying it anyway. And I don't know if any of the casters actually understand me. I, I have to remember that I'm the only real English speaking one here. Well, we are, I should say. Either way, I, I yeah. just it's it's to be safe, obviously. Um, I don't think either of these teams would resort to that at all, knowing no, all I, of these players. Yeah, what I'm saying is like I don't think it's stream sniping at all, but it's just the nature of the pause. Like when you pause, you, you discuss what's going on, where should I be farming, what should I be doing at greater length than you would in real time. Hmm. So they might be saying no one's on the map. Uh, just be like it's just a thing that you do just to be safe. Right. Taking and, precautions. But because of that, I think it potentially... In Banana Slam Jam, it might just spam Dark Pact and run away. We'll see here. Um, yeah, this is... It's when you've had so much time to discuss this, you have to imagine that something has crossed their minds that this is happening. But uh, regardless, that's just the nature of online tournaments, online qualifiers. I think for Dota Pit, we've been kind of blessed. We haven't had too many issues for the most part. But I think a lot of the teams that are in Dota Pit have taken precautions. For Summer's Rift, I don't think they've had the time to set it up. And even if they did set it up, then it's not always 100%. It's just... God, man, it's it sucks that's the way it works, but... A dumb thing to happen. It actually makes me upset a lot of the time, dude. Yep. I, I used to have this problem a long time ago, but I haven't had knock on wood this issue in a long time. When so. you were playing Han, perhaps? Yeah, tons of issues playing Han, but... It's, it's so... It's... It's uh, it's just people that... Nothing better to do, man. It's really frustrating. Of course we don't know. I mean, maybe it could just be a, an ISP issue, but... I hope to God it is. Either way, he's not here and he's having problems. Even Demon said he was lagging, so that's, that kind of sucks. All right, well, what else is going on? I'm sure there's other Dota happening currently. I believe the Red Bull qualifiers for America are happening. I think it's Boreal versus somebody. I'm not 100% sure. Um, so there's a lot of Dota happening. Obviously, MLG just finished up, too, so we might have a bit of a, a lull. Teams are boot camping, getting ready for the Summit, which is in about a month. Uh, it starts at about a month from now, uh, roughly. So that's going to be very exciting. 
after that. Who knows? We don't really have a timetable. I believe Valve is still in Hawaii. They might be back this week. I don't pretend to know anything about their schedule. I, I, I hear from other people uh, what they're up to. I don't have any real context in Valve. I kind of wish Hawaii, I did. Hawaii, huh? Yeah, they take a yearly vacation to Hawaii. I believe pretty much every time, uh, of, every year this time of the year. So, um, I, I don't know if it's everybody. I think I, I've, I've talked to Valve members before. Um, there's a, a really cool guy. I'm not going to name him. He went to the TI4 qualifiers last year. He came over to the NA hub, and um, we had a really good time talking with him and just kind of the inner stuff that was going on in Valve and stuff like that. And he said that some people, their vacation is to go to Hawaii and, and hang out with everybody there. His vacation was to come to the TI4 qualifiers and hang out with us. And I was like, that's so freaking cool. <laughs> I don't know. It was, it was really nifty. But he's a good guy. I haven't talked to him. I didn't see him at TI4, unfortunately. But Valve employees are pretty sweet. Yeah. And they are in, I think, Bellevue, right? They are. Their office yeah, is amazing, dude. It's, it's a really pretty city. It's oh my god! It, I when I went there last year, oh my lord! I'm like this is where I would like to retire one day. That that is a that is a nice city, dude. Although anyone else that's from Washington knows that Bellevue is where all the snobs live. I mean, yeah, well, that'll happen, I guess. But <laughs> known as Belltown, but like everyone that I I met in college, I went to Central, which is in Ellensburg, Washington. If anyone knows where that is, but it's like a it's like an hour and a half drive from Seattle. And uh, everyone I met from Bellevue was always so uptight and, like, better really? than you. That's a pretty God. big generalization, Trav. Come on, man. Well, it's not. I'm just saying everyone I met. I'm yeah, not saying true. everyone. Okay, okay Maybe that's, I fair. Did that's say. fair. That's fair. Maybe I did say everyone there. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, of course. I just, I don't know. I, I think that place is amazing. The Valve offices was mind-blowing, as I think most people will say on their first time there. Never been there, but uh, it looked cool from... The pic the small amount of pictures I've seen. You'd think it would be it would almost be bigger, but it's big enough. Uh, um, we had the luxury of going last time, Dakota and I, with the, a lot of other casters. And well, I'm looking forward to TI five, whatever happens this year. I'm sure they have other people re working remotely too, like especially artists and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. But it's weird because like when you go there, you expect everybody to know about Dota, but half the like like seventy five percent of the employees are working on other things, like. There's very few employees that were working on Dota at the time. And that's because, I mean, like, you think about Valve and you're like, okay, well, they have multiple IPs to work on. You've Left 4, Left 4 Dead, Half-Life 3, you know, which inevitably will come out someday in the future. Who knows when? Uh, Team Fortress uh, 2, I almost said Classic. Uh, Counter-Strike Go. So there's so many different games they have to work on. And the first thing they told us when we were there as casters, they said, guys, just be respectful. There are people working here. Uh, doing their job, I like. We know this tournament's going on, but like, just don't do anything, you know, too crazy. Just and and we kind of just sat back and didn't do much. Like when we had breaks, you know, we would go out. There'd be a TV near the Dota section, the Dota programming section, where we'd be watching all the other games that were being casted. Um, and then we'd have like there'd be a couple offices set up for the casters. But other than that, like, it's just a really cool. Play. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it too much because it makes me sound like a fanboy. Uh oh. We have lost Ralph. Oh no. Oh god. Good stuff, chat. Hope you're doing well. I have lost my co. <laughs> People from Washington didn't like what he said about Bellevue. <laughs> I'm just joking. I really hope he gets back in here. God, please. One, two, three, test. One, two, three, test. <laughs> well, 
this is actually I, I've so I, I do want to say this. I've been a part of many casts. I, I've heard the the horror stories of people having issues with with lag, with disconnects, with things of that nature. This is honestly the worst thing I've really ever encountered. I've never had it this bad where not only one team, but both teams and perhaps even a caster has it this rough. But it looks like he might be back. All right, hello? Hello. Welcome back. Okay. I had some scary issues. Hopefully they are resolved. I can't even imagine, man. And I don't <laughs> want to imagine. I really just... Well, it's probably a good thing because I was rambling on for the longest period of time. Just about, about nothing, really. So you missed out. Well, let's go. What can we talk about? More, more video, other video games, or uh... whatever you want, man. I'm down to talk about anything. Well, hmm. not anything. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about your love life, Mott. Uh, it's fine now, I guess. That's all, all right, I'm gonna right. talk about. Leave it to the imagination. Yeah, I sure. Let, let chat go crazy. Let him just make up shit. Who cares? All right. Well, I I really like I really want to talk about GTA Five, but I don't. I'm not going to because it can be rough. I, again, I just ramble. You got to pick the conversation, dude. I got to pick the conversation. I'll just pick up on that. My girlfriend told gave me links to go see uh, or go watch um Soda Pop and play GTA Five. Oh yeah, he's pretty good. He's pretty funny. I like that guy a lot. I've been watching Lyric a bit actually. Um. I watched him play. Did you ever see that Reign of Kings game? No. Oh, it's like uh, you know what you know Daisy obviously. I'm sh I'm sure. Yeah, I've never played it, but I know of it. It's like Daisy in medieval times, but also you can build houses and stuff. It's kind of like got a Minecraft component to it. It's like the first thing. Does like, it have the, Minecraft graphics? No, it okay. looks like Daisy, but the building system's kind of like Minecraft. Is what I'm trying to say. Uh, it was interesting. It, it was really cool because the people would come up to him. Like, obviously, like, they would find him. Like, he had, like, a ton of viewers. Like, a, just a ton of viewers. And so people would find where he was, what server he would be on. And they, they would come up to him in, like, these funny accents because there's voice chat and stuff. And they just start talking. Oh, God, it's great. No, I haven't played that. Uh, I haven't played that. Oh, you know, all right, here's a really random topic. This is when you know we're, uh, we're scraping. trying to search for things to talk about. But I was obsessed with pickleball in college. Wow. I, I was, like, randomly watching pickleball tournaments <laughs> on YouTube last night. I know. I know. I'm a, I'm a damn nerd. No, that's awesome. Pickleball is fun as hell. You like pickleball? I mean, I played it because we had, we had such a big school at my high school that we, we had so many gym classes that we, we would pretty much have, like, almost every elective possible for gym. I mean, I played everything oh, yeah. in gym class. I didn't play it, like, outside of gym class, but I, I've, I played it a lot. We had, like, a, a pickleball segment. It was crazy. It was like it was like I played because you could choose. It was like either pickleball or badminton. I love badminton. I played it a ton. Yeah, badminton's pretty good too. I, I wasn't very good at badminton, but I was good at pickleball. I'm pretty I'm pretty good at ping pong, but well, I should say I used to be really good at ping pong or table um, tennis. But, I'm uh, scrubbed here. I'm scrubbed here at ping pong. I've said I'm this not... before. I've said this before. I am by far the the only thing that I'm very good at in life is swimming. <laughs> uh, swimming. Okay. I am a Easily 5K swimmer, 5K MMR swimmer. Yeah, um, that would make me like a 2,500 swimmer. And um, I actually coached swim, uh, a swim team for about three and a half years. I actually, qu I didn't quit this year. I just kind of stopped. I, I, I kind of took a leave of absence and I told my, my boss, my head coach, I was like, hey man, I, I'm really focusing on this Dota thing now. So um, shout out to all my kids. They, they ask me sometimes about my casting and, a couple of them will come up to me, like 12, 13, 14 year old kids. D D Dota sucks, lol, so much better. I'm just like, you fucking. I'm gonna, I swear to God, man. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I. I and people I are like. Sub Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I used to sub teach in the Olympia area a lot near in Washington. Mm -hmm. um, and I would have a ton of students there that would say the same thing to me. Like they played Dota or whatever. Or Dota. At that time, it was like Han. Yeah. But. And then it's crazy to think that now, like, you know, so many players that are very young that could easily be students of mine. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. That's actually a really good point. What's crazier to me is, like, 
Smail still was playing. I, I, I'm of course talking about Smail, but he was still playing like when I kind of was playing Dota one as well. Like that kid's, and that's weird. Like when I was started when I started playing Dota, I was in college. Right. When he started playing Dota, he was like, of what, like seven or eight or something. Some ridiculous age, I'm sure. I don't when even I was, know. When I was seven or eight, I was that. playing. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Yeah, like, dude. crap. Remember that? I was playing. Yeah, the, all the. The education games, too. The educational yeah. games. Freaking Oregon Trail. Where the Math Blasters. Saying. Math Blasters. Oh, hell yeah. That's my jam. Uh, yeah, like, when I was a kid, the only the only real games I played as a kid were, like, I played Prince of Persia a lot. Uh, that, I played, that was, like, sh my first video game, really. I played, like, Sonic and stuff. But it was mostly, like, education games in school until I got my real first PC. Then I started playing Counter-Strike at the age of 10. So there was that. Mm -hmm. That went well. Luckily, I had a deep enough voice that people thought I was at least 15. Good stuff. All right. I, we, it looks like, actually, we're, we're getting back into the game. Summer's Rift's even here? I, he's not. I think we might have to 4v5. Oh, God. Well, it looks like I'm that's so going to be the case. Well, we're back. You don't have to listen to us ramble, specifically me. They're going to jump in. They're going to find Banana Slam Jim. I had almost forgotten that that gank was happening, yeah, but it was, wait. and it actually has been successful. Well... At least you can say that Banana Slam Jamma has integrity, right? That's what we've learned from all this. So he does go down, and someone's microing Brax right now, but the problem is he won't be able to buy any items. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've seen so many situations like this where it's 40... This is such a hard hero to micro, too. Like, you have to be very, very careful about your position and whatnot. So I've seen so many situations like this where the, the game will just kind of end in, like, five minutes. Hopefully, for Summer's Rift's sake, they can do a good job enough, good enough job microing him that when he comes back, nothing of value is lost. Yeah, he he, I think will be able to, hopefully, buy some items if he does get back. And they're doing a pretty good job microing him. I think it's actually Whitebeard because he's sticking with him, and is not really being involved in these ganks. He might try to relocate. Um, also could have been Banana Slam Jammin' when he was dead, but he will respawn now. His Shadow Blade is getting close to completion. And this is probably... Uh, who knows how this game might have gone had Brax reconnected, but this is Team Tinker's time now for them to just sit back for him a little bit more, maybe even start putting on the aggression against Summer's Rift. This is going to be very tough. This is a very tough time for Summer's Rift on the Zyra side here. Yeah, we haven't really felt the full effects of him being DC'd yet, but come next big team fight... Or if he accumulates enough gold where he can't buy anything, then you'll start to feel it. So, again, hopefully for their sake, they can maybe just keep it passive, start farming, and bank on the fact that he will come back. But at this point, yeah, I, I think they just need to be very, very careful. Also, it looks like it might be uh, the Wisp microing him, and that's got to be one of the hardest micromanagement jobs you can have. He's actually going to relocate Brax just out. <laughs> And he's actually going to TP Brax back in, maybe so you can tether to him. Maybe they can get this kill on the whip. He couldn't buy Brax a TP, so if Whitebeard you gets can. out... Oh, you can? You can buy you can, it. Well, you can buy it, drop it, and give it to uh, him. That's true. That's a good point. Way too in trouble. Assassinate's about to go. Meanwhile, they jump in. Hookshot hogs under two. Mystic Flare. Bulba taking a lot of damage. Brax going to jump on. Koifa going to work. They still have that egg going. Not really getting that stun off, though. Way too. Maybe in trouble. Actually, not way too. Rather, Whitebeard. Pile I die. Gonna get called up. Trying to TP out. Can't quite make it in time. The spirit's there, but not hitting. Now they will. And the double call coming through for Bugatti. And despite losing Brax and despite playing four versus five, that's still a four for two engagement on the side yeah. of Summer's Rift. That's huge. Although Black is going in on top. Well, I would easily consider that a win. No, oh, he misses the blink call. Maybe he thought he shift queued it, but really nice job there from. I'm assuming it's Whitebeard and, and using the overcharge, and they just like. They just thought they could just kill Brax, but the overcharge happened the whole time. Again, that's one of those instances of where you need to ignore that hero, even if it is a relatively squishy hero like Sniper, and you need to kill the Wisp first. It's only going to get worse as time goes on. Yeah. And the fact that they're winning 4v5 right now, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, that is uh, something to behold. Who knows if this will keep up. This... Oh, man, this game could get real interesting real quick. That's all I'm saying about that, but... Bugatti getting the majority of the kills there, 12-3-2. I talked about him having a big game and how much of an impact that would provide, and I think that could be pretty big this game. He's already yes, up to a really solid position. He has a full maybe. Crimson. He even just bought a 4-staff, I believe. BSJ now finished up the Shadow Blade up to 1,000 gold as well. 
He's doing well. Black sitting still on Vlad's. It looks like he just got his Yasha. He'll probably put down maybe, yeah, the Stout Shield comes down and he'll sell that quickly. And they're rotating Brax bottom with 2,000 gold to the bank. Who knows what he might have gotten or what he will get if he re returns to the game at some point in time. Probably Mom. Probably a Mask of Madness into Scotty. I, th I think that's what he usually goes for. I have to also clarify in chat that yes, like it, it might sound crazy. Oh, it might sound so weird that trying to micro uh, a wisp with a sniper is very easy because sniper just auto attacks. But you can't just you can't just auto attack, sit in the back, and hope all is going to be one for sniper. Like he has got a lot of stuff he's got to dodge. He has to be very very quick with his movements and making sure he gets out of the way of you know uh, hook cogs or the storm spirit, what have you. So it's a lot easier said than done. I mean, he's, it's more just that too. He's a, the shrapnel. If he had an, if he had a mom, you'd have to activate it. But that's not the case. Assassinate maybe. And all while that, all, all while that's happening, spirit control, overcharge Dyer's control, tethering back and forth, relocating it and out. It's not easy. There's a lot. I mean, Mike wing any hero. Mean, well, hold that thought. They're gonna jump in. Roche is tipped, ticked up. Uh, the agent is grabbed by PSJ. They take it down two on the side of Summer's Rift. It's a one on the side of Team Tinker. You can see Waits is already dead. They buy back. That'll be up onto the IO, but he can't relocate back in. PSJ Shadow Blade. They'll find Pilot Die. He's gonna Icarus dive. They can't quite get the kill, but the blink. And now Bugatti, more than he offered, for more than he wanted, he's going to get chased down. Sunray doing a lot of damage. It's going to bring him down. Meanwhile, BSJ chasing after Pilot Eye. Can't quite get the kill. Team Ticker turning the fight around. That's the Aegis gone. Pilot Eye teeping out. He'll make it away. Black right on top of BSJ. He still has Mana Void. Shadow Dance is going to go. No, it's the Shadow Blade. He actually Shadow Danced as well just beforehand. Bulba going to right click him. He's right near that Sentry Ward. Banana Slam Jamma getting chased down. They don't have any more detection here. Black looking to maybe jump back in. He'll blink away instead as there's more heroes coming in, specifically Demon from the side of Summer's Rift. Turns into a pretty good fight, though, for Tinker, despite not getting the Roshan and not getting the Aegis. Turns pretty okay for them. A couple things about that. One, the first thing I saw is, Bulba, how could you possibly miss your cogs on a hero resurrecting? He to was just totally far away, and then Banana Slam Jamma didn't get hit by him, just ran away. So that was kind of embarrassing, but... Uh, the uh, Unfortunately, the relocate out was cancelled by something. They're pausing again. Maybe he's coming back right now, hopefully. But the relocate got cancelled, and then when he te he bought back, he uh, he TP'd in because he couldn't relocate. But uh, can we use someone to lock in? I don't... Uh, usually people don't let you do that. No, that is that is that is one rule that I think is across the board not allowed. Uh, yeah. Because that would be pretty easily abused. And I think the admin is Ben Q. He should... I, I'd like to... Let's see. Oh, Team Tinker are relentless. Yeah, this, uh... They, they have every right to do that, though. They really do, if, especially if that's the, uh... If that's the rules. I mean, it, it sucks, but... In the end, rules are rules. I don't, I, I don't really know what they are, but I'm just gonna assume that... People know what's going on. And They're, I imagine Team Tinker will be a little bit upset about this. I mean, Summer's Rift are, are out of pause time. Uh, that, uh, Team Tinker, again, like we said, they have every right to do this. It's unfortunate, but I, I think they might just... Summer's Rift are... Uh, I don't know about this. I'm not gonna... Mm. <laughs> I mean, if that's, the, if that's what the admins say, then you cannot, you cannot fault Team... It's worse, too, that... And I don't want to get too much into this, but... It shouldn't be Team Tinker saying go if that's what the admins rule. It should be the admins stepping in saying well, we need to go. But of course, I don't 100% know. They say they're down to two minute pause time. All right, well, well again, I guess we're I, not going to figure it out. Won't get too much into it, but it does suck that they're. This is just a really bad standard. situation. Yeah. Because people are going to start saying things that you know they have no business saying. And Regardless, at least Banana Slam Gemma is back. Pause past Larry now putting his foot down. The admin, of course, in this situation. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know, man. It's tough. And if, if BSJ is lacking as well, then attack. I don't know if you, you can't really play, you know, three, especially with a Slark, you can't play three versus five. Is Slark missing? Oh, so it, it sounds like the rule is they, they could use the stand in, but they already used all their now. pause time, so they can't do it now. I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that's what it is. I, I think you're correct in that statement. I think you're okay. right. Uh, well, good call. 
This is one of the few tournaments that allows that rule, then. That's very interesting. Because I, I feel as if almost every other tournament will not allow that to happen. However, right. that's actually pretty accommodating. Um, but, <laughs> with that being said, I think it is because there is no pause time. Enough of that, though. We're back into the game. We're still going through. Net worth is pretty even across the board, at least for the top three. Black is going to blink away. As Brax was, well, who, I guess... Uh, Whitebeard at this point was throwing down a shrapnel. They are kind of grouped up Dyer's looking for this tier one tower. tower is under attack. It kind of sucks. I feel like... Nah, I'm not going to go into it. They'll push out the wave. Banana Slam Gemma has his Manta style, by the way, which is a pretty solid choice up against the Storm Spirit with an Orchid. Uh, Quirkfoot does have a BKB also, which is nice, but... What are you thinking, Trout? What are you thinking now as we get to you on here? Um... Again, I, I'm still thinking the worst. Well, worst thing about it is that that Brax can't buy items. Yes. Like maybe maybe you can still micro him. Someone on your team dies. You throw out a Mystic Flare on Demon. You're pretty much done what you need to do, and then you can micro. That's fine. People can micro. Pros should be able to do it. The biggest thing is you were physically not able to buy items onto him, and that's where the big problem comes into play. I have Brax on my friends list, and he did just come back on my Steam, so maybe he can short join here shortly. Uh, and then he can start buying perhaps a Mask of Madness into a Scotty or something like that. But we'll see. I mean, they still have decent farm, and overall, the, the net worth is zero. It is completely even. Um, so wait, it says the team still do have to pause. Okay, so the team has to pause for the, the, the player to reconnect into the game. So I don't think that's uh, another person on Brax's account. Unless, like, they somehow, you know... Tinker decides to pause, which I don't think is the case. But anyways, if, if Brax could get back in, buy an item or two, and get out, that might be enough. <laughs> I listen, man, I'm just I'm I'm thinking about the the worst possible situation here for some reason. You have to assume that hopefully he's gonna come back, but maybe in the back of your head you also have to think attack. you have to have to plan for the worst. That's really the yeah. biggest issue. Yeah, it's great we have to say at the very least if you can just get in there for a split split second before he DCs, purchase everything you can, buy some wards and and then you're out, but... Yeah, I don't know. He was on Steam for a second. I don't Dyer's know if he still is, but... Uh, There's a big attack. Skype message that I want to read real quick, but I'm also trying to make sure I catch everything in the game. All yeah, right. we should probably watch the game at least a little bit until yeah. something big happens, but... Dyer's bottom tower Black, he's got his Manta, so these silences he doesn't really care about. Manta's also really big against Axe, because if you were able to get those illusions up before he calls, he Dyer's loses all his mana instantly. Is under attack. And a lot of heroes parked up here in the bottom lane. Storm Spirit's top, though. With the gem, very close to his bloodstone after the... Uh, oh, he has his BKB, too. So, very close to that. Went Orchid's BKB, now into bloodstone. Um, but yeah, it looks like they really want to fight bottom. No, they're leaving. Okay. Oh, Brax is reconnected to the game. He's made it in. Now he's just got to buy items. I don't know. He should be controlling this now. Get your mom, Brax. Yeah. Get, a, get anything. Any item at this point will do. We don't know how long he's going to be in here. Uh, I've been told to read something from BenQ, one of the admins for iLeague, and I will okay. do so while I have a second. Uh, it was pretty much what they said before, but to allow a standard to be used, the following criteria has to be met. The player is unable to reconnect. Dyer's the team still do have pause time attack. to use, so those two criteria must be met. A maximum of two loads due to a player being a unable to reconnect may be used. In case of a load, the game will be played on a until the, clo the closest full minute and load from that point if there's a fight or any other way game-changing... Uh, happening. The game will go on until next full minute where there is no game changing action. So a lot of that has to do with loading, which isn't really a situation we're in at right now. So yes, we we, we were correct in our first assumption. Okay. I'll take I'm glad we clarified that. that. Maybe Brax is okay. Oh, he buys a Maelstrom. Maybe a some lifesteal as well. No, no, he just maybe wants Maelstrom into BKB is my guess. So... A little bit of a different build than we've seen from both him and other snipers. Usually they love to get that Mask of Madness. But once the extra damage with Maelstrom, it is one of the most cost-effective items in the entire game. <laughs> and uh, perhaps saving this gold, that leads me, to le leads me to believe he wants that BKB too. Which is great against a number of the things coming out. The Orchids, the Mana Burn from Anti-Mage, the Mana Void. Um, and then, of course, the ca or the uh, battery assault damage from the this, clockwork. This could be a big fight. This could be a big fight here for, for Boba, from Team Tinker, for everybody. Battery assault, they actually find Banana Slam Jamma. Shadow Blades, they don't have detection! 
Boba gonna get chased down. They relocate Banana Slam Jam out. Quick is gonna jump in. Demon in trouble. Gonna die to the Orchid Soul Burn. Death Ward on the ground, but no follow up. Not doing any damage. Bugatti was already well away, but now another ball lightning in. Bugatti does get the call off, but they bring him down. Two dead. Team Taker now starting to rise up. Getting a couple of kills here and there. Pretty big kills at that. Bugatti especially. Black now getting involved. Manta style, 4.3k. BSJ is very far out currently. Still has the Shadow Blade up in five seconds. Will walk away from any other harm coming through. From Team Tinker get a nice little engagement there. Are all starting off with BSJ getting jumped on. He does survive, but two go down. It's just hard to really prevent or stop the Storm Spirit from running in with BKB on. The only thing you can, you have against that is the, uh, is the Axe Call. But if they get the jump on you and they spread your heroes out around that fight, then it's difficult to kind of zone in on him. And even if they do get the call into him, I think he's pretty tanky. Like, he's got extra health from BKB, he's got a Bloodstone now to help with that, so it's actually hard to take him down, too, inside of this call. If he has, even if he has a BKB on, because that Mystic Flare won't do anything. Hmm. This is turning into quite the mid-game here. Black will go ahead and jump away. Assassinate was about to go from Rax. They smoked up underneath the ward. It's a ward right here. And in fact, they put a sentry down too, but it was just out of range. Look at this. And it looks like, did Team Tinker see that? They must have seen that smoke. They're even going to TP pilot out, so they know. It looks like they do have a good idea. They have a good understanding that they are missing 100% off the map. Roche Tinker with very up. good vision. Yeah, if they ran right into Roche, I think they could have, they could be doing it by now. Maybe even kill it. But uh, Clockwork, he's putting in a... A rocket there, the Roche just got it out, so he'll see that it's not being done at least right now. They ping out a warp, but Banana Slam Jamma says my ult was not working right there, so they must have vision, and he's right. Yeah, he knows yep, exactly he where it again. is. Yeah, that's you could just pinpoint that pretty easily as a Slark. As he walks back up to his own high ground, it's not over there, it's on the other side. He knows it's on that cliff, there's a good chance. Roche, again, like you talked about, it's available. They could have taken it, but they're not going to, at least not yet. Team Tinker also could get in there and take it if they maybe get a kill or maybe they just go for a crazy smoke gank. Do they have any on them? It was on the courier. Black is going to be kind of bait here in this middle lane. The rest of them will smoke behind Black. Head up towards, I think, the secret shop on the dire side. And Summer's Rift seem to have an understanding that they're all missing. However, BSJ is playing a bit far out. Ball Lightning's going to go quick, but not going to be able to connect there. He did get the overload. And he gets the courier. What was on it? A point booster, BSJ, his Scotty, which was almost done, I imagine. He had a full ultimate orb. And that wasn't quite there yet, but that courier snipes is still a pretty big deal for Tinker. And now they head into the Roche Pit, and Black with his Butterfly. This is going to fall pretty quickly, I imagine. Yeah. He really likes to go Butterfly. Before. I've seen him play this before. He likes getting Butterfly over the Heart or the, the Basher. It's just a lot more aggressive. It means your illusions do a lot more damage. I touched on that last cast. So... Pretty easy Roshan attempt for them. Doesn't look like Summer's Rift are going to put any contention towards it. Yeah, that's going to be an Aegis for Storm. So he's got 10 Bloodstone Charges now as well. That gem is up, which is very important against BSJ. And just the vision. We talked in the early stages of this game how impressive Demon's warding was. I mean, we talked about where he had those wards and how great their early game was because of it. But now it's turning into, okay, we have a gem, Team Ticker. They're getting the vision. They've got some decent Observer wards, kind of in sort of the same location. One defensive ward near their own uh, near their own jungle. But now they have vision to see who's going to head up towards this tier 2 to try to defend it. They know exactly where everyone's coming Dyer's through. And it looks like they'll be able to take attack. this tier 2 just fine without any real uh, contention. Yep. Easy tower Dyer's for them. Black. Tower Ooh. Has yeah. Double damage there. Transferred from the bottle from Bulba 2. So he's going to do a ton of damage to this. And this is where Koifu can just go go ham. Like, he shouldn't be too scared here. Ooh, it's called, nice but he call called there. lightnings. Uh, it's still, he's going to fall. It looks like the sniper just destroying the back lines. But they're going to jump in. They'll find Demon. It's not the target they wanted. Mystic Flare doing a lot of damage. Not enough. Summary. But Black jumps all the way in. Gets the kill on Brax. Now back to the fray. Banana Sled. Yeah, but trying to fight Death War. Not doing much because of the Shadow Dance coming in. Black going to work on the Tier 3 tower. There's the pull all the way in the base. They get the kill on the aisle. Assassinate's going to go through. I think Koikva dodged it. And now with three deaths on the side of Summer's Rift, they're going to take the racks here. Black will man fight against BSJ. BSJ has to run. Sunray going through. Black into the right click. The cast bouncing as well. Brax in trouble. Mana Void not there. They don't need it. They got the racks mid. And 
Well, actually, bottom, but they're going to go mid instead now. Pile I Die has the Shiva's Guard, not even using it. Still ready to go. Sunray and Supernova on cooldown for a bit. Buyback from the Slark. They have to defend here. This is only game number one, and you can say what you will about the game, but it looks like Team Tinker are about to take it. BSJ, Shiva's Guard, still no Shadow Dance or Shadow Blade for about 18 seconds, and they'll get four full Raxes. Two sets of Raxes. Ball Lightning away coming out from Quakefoot. He'll head up to the jungle, but the fight is won, and perhaps the game is well for Team Tinker. And then a DC coming out from Demon. Uh, and they just leave. Uh, they, they, that's, you know, that's actually not unexpected for me. <laughs> a little bit of uh, sodium in the air, I suspect, but yeah. I mean, it's just a, it's just a bad situation all around. It so. is. It really is. And Stupendous. again, I really want to focus on this for the the people at home. Team Tinker were not in the wrong. No, they had every not. reason to do what they did. Now Summer's I'll Rift. It's sure unfortunate that happened. It really, truly is. Because that you could argue they were in a very good position before that, but at the same time, it's just the nature of the game. I really wish we didn't have to have this, and in fact, I fucking hate people that do this. It pisses me off to know, and I'm even getting salty. Guys, stop fucking doing it. It's people. This is their livelihood for the most part. That's all I'm gonna I wish, say. I, you know, it's it's upsetting, but I wish that Summer's Rift would have the decency to just GG out instead of doing it kind of this way. I know, I know it's frustrating, but it's not like it's Team Tinker's fault. They're right. just playing by the rules. Right. Um, this is a little annoying to see, and a little kind of unexpected, of course. But Team Tinker will take Game 1 uh, off the back of some unfortunate things, but still they play very nicely. Like Koifa, regardless, had tons of farm. Black, with an unfortunate start, was able to pick it back up. And so we'll see if Summer's Rift can come back in Game 2. Yeah, I mean, as... as Angry as they must be, they have to channel that into the second game here. And they have to hope to God that their internet holds up. That's the that's the best thing for them. Team Tinker, they come back. Uh, I don't want to talk about this game too much. There's not much to talk about. Um, you could argue that maybe the, the disconnects helped for Team Tinker. I'm sure they probably did in some way, shape, or form. Team Tinker played a solid game, though. I mean, despite everything that happened for Summer's Rift, and it's not like Summer's Rift played poorly either. Both teams played well. I want to applaud both of them. Unfortunately, the game ended the way it did, man. But we got to look into we got to look forward to game two, Trout. That's what we have to look forward to. Yep, absolutely. I think you said everything. I'm just uh, excited to see what happens in the next game, right? Yeah, well, maybe some more salt is going to be expended. Well, we'll have to wait and see, guys. Game number two for the I League North America qualifiers coming back around here in just a second. Stick around, everybody, and uh, let's hope. Let's hope for the next game. See you soon, guys.